Thus far, we've learnt that the cost structure of a firm consists of fixed financing costs, fixed operating costs and variable costs. If we plot a firm's total costs against the number of units it produced and sold, we get this upward-sloping straight line where the steepness is determined by the variable cost per unit. The higher the variable cost, the steeper the line. The break-even point is the number of units a firm needs to produce and sell in order to fully cover all of its variable and fixed costs. So if we plot the revenue against the number of units sold, the intersection between the two lines is the break-even point where revenue equals total cost. The contribution margin is the difference between the price and variable cost per unit. When the contribution margin widens, the break-even quantity is reduced. Conversely, when it narrows, the break-even quantity increases. And if the sales price per unit cannot even cover the variable cost, the break-even quantity is infinite and the company should probably <coughs> fold up. Calculating this break-even point is simple. Revenue is the quantity of sales multiplied by the price per unit. Total cost is the quantity of sales times the variable cost per unit plus the fixed operating costs plus the fixed financing costs. Solve for the quantity where revenue equals the total cost and we get this equation. Let's look at an example. The income statement for a Dodas Corp for the past year is summarised in the table below. The company only sells one product at $10 per unit. Based on the information given, what is the Dodas' break-even quantity of sales? Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. Let's first recall the formula for break-even quantity. We know the fixed operating costs, the fixed financing costs, and the price per unit. So the only thing we need to calculate is the variable cost per unit. Since there is only one product, the number of units sold is the revenue divided by the price per unit, which gives us 12,000 units. The variable cost per unit is therefore $6. Plug all the figures into the formula and we get a break-even quantity of 7,500 units. And that's essentially the gist of finding the break-even point for a firm. Sometimes you may need to exclude financing cost in order to make better comparisons across companies with different capital structures. This is known as the operating break-even point, which is simply the fixed operating cost divided by the contribution margin per unit. This is the point where the revenue is equal to the total variable cost plus only the fixed operating costs. So back to our last example, if we want to calculate the operating break-even point for a Dodis Corp, we exclude the fixed financing costs and get an answer of 4,500 units. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.